and welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. In the last episode we did a ring modulator which turned into two ring modulators because I did some mistakes with this one. So, uh, And in this episode we're going to make another ring modulator. Or should I say yet another ring modulator. We're going to make the Yarm by Rene Schmitz. The Yarm Plus even. Um, and uh, that one is made using another chip, of course, to make to mix things up a bit. The 1496, which is a modulator demodulator chip, so a chip more made for this uh, uh, purpose. Uh, so we are going to take a look at the schematics of that one, and then I'm going to build it, and we're going to see if how how that differs from the really simple one we did last time um, and we'll go through some of the um, uh, calibration uh, pro pro procedures that you have to do with this one as well. Before we do that I'd like to say thank you to my Patreons. Thank you so much for uh, supporting me on Patreon uh, and that is what makes it possible for me to do these videos a bit easier. So thank you very much everyone over there uh, and with that said uh, let's go and look at the schematics. We find the schematics as well at uh, René Schmidt's website schmidtsbits.de and when we go into VCA submenu and look down a bit we see a couple of VCAs and at the end we see YARM Ring Modulator and YARM Ring Modulator Plus. And when you have two different products to choose between and one has a plus in it, of course we're gonna choose the one with a plus. So if we read what it says about the YARM Plus Ring Modulator, um, here's a version with higher gain which allows you to obtain 5 volt peak to peak waveform on the output when using 5 volt peak to peak on the input. The limits given in the schematics are meant for preventing the output to clip. You may not exceed 3.5 volts simultaneously on both inputs. However, as long as the product is, product is lower than the clipping level, you can drive the input above 3.5 volts. So when we click the schematics, we see that this one is a bit more complicated than the 4011 one we did last time. And this one uses the 1496 demodulator modulator chip so this is a chip more used for a ring modulator uh, it also has three trim pots that we're gonna look at closer in a bit uh, and those are for one is for the offset and one is for trimming the x and y input uh, so they when nothing is connected they are at zero so let's build this one and we're gonna look at how to calibrate this. And for the front panel I took the design from the 4011, changed the A and B oh, oops, A and B into X and Y because that's what Rene uses on his design and the output is still an output and just changed the text. There's no controls on this front panel uh, either. So this is what is needed. And soldering this together as usual is nothing special. Um, we can see this is a bit more complicated than the last build. So this was the 4011 ring modulator with very few components and then this one that is a bit more complicated. I'd say the most complicated part of this uh, is what we have to do now though because now we need to uh, calibrate this. So this one should be calibrated with a few with these three uh, potentiometers here to uh, a specific a specific way which I actually had to uh, mail and ask Renee how to do and uh, let's go through that now. So the calibration process is supposedly like this. We, what the ring modulator is, is it's x times y equals output. Uh, and if one of the inputs is zero, 
uh, which I've done here with a modified cable that just connects the pin to ground like so so this one is zero now so X whatever we put in here times Y which is zero should be zero so we add a Uh, sinus wave here on this input and let's see now we should with these trim pots the X, X and Y trim pots and the offset we're gonna make so the output is uh, zero as well so did a little thing here with uh, the other part of this cable uh, that just makes two uh, two uh, pins like this so it's easier for me to uh, connect oscilloscopes and stuff like that so we're gonna start by bringing this offset somewhere there so that's the offset button uh, or offset trim pot uh, so now we're in range and now we should adjust is it X or Y we should adjust with the Y connected to ground let's try the Y the Y does nothing so it is of course X when we are connected on X. Look at that, almost. It was really sensitive though. Too much. I think that's as good as I can get it. And then we do the same with Y so now it's Y that's the wrong way yeah something like that and let's see now when both are connected to ground it should be well the offset is a wee bit off let's see if we can get that up one way too much oh, it just goes down again okay fine Let's just check again. There should be some back and forth doing this just to make sure that we really get it there. That was X and then we do Y. Oh, what happened here? So we do X again. We could have the breaking jack connected to uh, ground, I guess. That would be a good thing for this. So it's good. And that is good. Ish. Yeah. Let's say that it, this is good enough. So let's um, listen to this one instead. I realized for the offset uh, when both the inputs are grounded I might actually need to uh, use a voltmeter because this one I'm not sure but this one could be auto leveling so because when I turn the pot it it 
shifted the waveform a bit and then it just went back to that position so it could be that it's out to leveling or whatever it is but it seems um, when I ground both inputs we get 0 0.02 uh, volts minus 0 0.02 volts so that is really negligible I think um, so I'm I'm satisfied with this uh, calibration. All right, we've moved up here again. It is connected with uh, just the two uh, sinus oscillators again, uh, and right now one is controlled with the. Uh, from the uh, BB-8 so that's when you hear that when it goes over there so let's remove that one as well So very much a ring modulated sound. Changing waveform, a square wave on this one. Look at that waveform. Almost looks like the waveform is skewed. It goes like that. Lasers, as someone probably already has said in the comments. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
say I think this is as good as you'd get uh, in uh, with a ring modulator it's actually been calibrated to show do exactly what it is supposed to do uh, it is a bit more complicated to build probably a bit more expensive to build as well than the other one but uh, I think the results really nice I think the other one sounds good as well but it's now we have two different to uh, uh, compare with. Uh, I guess the next video almost has to be lasers just to uh, have some something to show with the sound that this one makes. Uh, we had a discussion about that on Discord the other day uh, about uh, uh, what we what projects we did when we were kids uh, and uh, with the advent of those small laser pointers and we did uh, laser visualization uh, stuff like that uh, me and some other people uh, anyway there's so the next the next module is going to be one that I've wanted to make a, a long time it's actually one that I bought a kit from uh, a long time ago as well a long time ago uh, and it's just been lying there in uh, the drawer uh, never used. I, 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 I bought it from a friend uh, who had built it so I actually bought it pre-built but there was some cables that were loose and stuff and I've never tried to repair it. So in the next episode I'll build one from scratch just uh, to do that uh, and we're gonna see what that does. So it's still a bit ring modulation but it does a few other fun stuff as well. Um, I think it's an Elector magazine talk funny was the uh, magazine thing the, the article's name so uh, but that's for the next episode until then take care bye